Good morning, everybody. Sunday, the 1st of October, 2023. Thank you for allowing me into your homes. I pray that we have a blessed time together as we share this morning. Our call to worship is taken from Psalm 78. Oh, my people, hear my teaching. Listen to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in parables. I will utter hidden things, things from of old, what we have heard and known, what our fathers have told them. We will not hide them from our children. We will tell the next generation the praiseworthy deeds of the Lord, His power and the wonders He has done. Amen. Let us pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, as we gather this morning, um, wherever we are, across the globe, across your world, for God so loved the world, we gather this morning to worship you, to honor you, and to love you. Lord, we come to you in sacrificial time, in, in just desiring to be in your presence, in thankfulness and joyfulness and hopefulness. We just place ourselves before you to hear your word and your message. Father, we acknowledge that we are sinners, that we fall far, far short of your heavenly standards. And um, Lord, we just pray that you forgive us, that you relent and let us free, set us free from the burden that holds us and binds us and ensnares us. It's like this vine that constantly seeps and drags us down. Lord, help us to break free by the power of your spirit. Father, we just give ourselves to you as we hear your word and your message. We pray that you bless us and that we bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our reading today is from Exodus. Exodus chapter 17, 1 to 7. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of Sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? But the people were thirsty for water, and they grumbled against Moses. They said, Why did you bring us up from Egypt to make us and our children and livestock die of thirst? Then Moses cried out to the Lord, What am I to do with these people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord answered Moses, Walk on ahead of the people, take with you some of the elders of Israel, and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will stand there before you at the rock of Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders of Israel, and he called the place Mashah, or and Meribah because the Israelites quarreled and because they tested the Lord saying, is the Lord among us or not? Yo, what a reading, what a reading. Um, Lord bless it to us. Sometimes when I look at lectionary readings and I start to prepare sermons, I really believe God is trying to tell us something, really wanting us to get a point um, that I think we sometimes miss. And last week we visited a sermon um, with Jonah, Jonah entitled Never Satisfied. This week with the Israelites, the first thought um, or idea um, came to mind was on the moan again. Um, again, stressing and probably highlighting the idea that we never satisfied, that we never, um, we never get it. God wants things His way. We want it our way. Uh, we always want it our way. Um, and God says to us in Isaiah, remember this. My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. And follows very shortly on the opening verse of that chapter, where Isaiah, God says, Come all who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come, buy and eat, come, buy wine and milk, without money or cost. It's a reiteration of what Jesus says in Matthew 11, 28-30. Come to me, all who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. 
take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. And yet we will always and probably still will always be never satisfied and always on the moan again. Because we are so slow to learn. I, it perplexes me, and I'm, I'm pointing four fingers at me as I do this. Um, but I mean, let's just have a look at the story. Let's understand the story. Chapters 1 to 18 of Exodus are all about the Hebrew people, the Israelites, their captivity, how God comes to their rescue, journeying with them on their pilgrimage to freedom. Chapter 17 in our reading for today, we come face to face with this dire need for water. In verse 1 we read, The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin, traveling from place to place as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. You know what? God is with them. God is with us, guiding them by cloud, by day, and fire by night. A meal of manna provided six days a week. On the seventh, they ate leftovers. God's presence, His provision, His divine sovereign activity is all around them. And yet, they still go on the moan again. We read in verse 2, So they quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses replied, Why quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? Now I know, I mean, when I'm thirsty, I'm thirsty. But the Israelites really are thirsty. And they respond, Why? Why did you bring us up out of Egypt and make us our children and our livestock die of thirst? And Moses then turns to God. And yeah, we then hear that God provides water. But our passage, the story, is not so much about this physical journey that we're on. And I think this applies so readily to us today. But it's a journey of a renewed soul, a new way of thinking, a new life, a new life of freedom um, from slavery and bondage. Then it was from the Egyptians. For us today, it's freedom from bondage of sin and destruction. It's an unlearning, as it were, of old habits. But once again, we see the provision of God and the care, the compassion displayed. Verses 5 and 6. The Lord answers Moses, go out in front of the people, take some of the elders, strike the rock, and I will provide water. You know, ultimately, it's a passage that asks us, challenges us, whichever way you look at it, about our trust in God. And the sovereignty of God. Our struggle to believe that no matter what, where, how, or why we find ourselves, God is there and God will provide. So the question then becomes why, as Moses asks, why do you quarrel? Why do you put the Lord your God to the test? <laughs> Are we testing whoever? Or God, or both. Because the truth be told, when we face difficult circumstances as a test from God, God is really just doing one thing. He's growing us spiritually. He's testing our hearts to see if they're true, if they belong to Him. So how do we respond? Hopefully, hopefully faithfully trusting in God, our sovereign God. Or do we moan and grumble? Kevin McAteer says that when we put God to test, we doubt His kindness in any situation. We question His providence, His wisdom. We grumble and complain under the weight of a trial. We openly accuse Him of leaving and deserting us, His people. Yet we know the promise of Hebrews 13 verse 5. I will never leave you nor forsake you. And we still, for some other reason, always think we deserve better than what we've got. Better than what God has given us. The truth be told, God allows trials. They are common to man, to humanity. They show just how short the world has fallen of the glory of God. Most of all, they show us the Lord's mercy. His provision is more than adequate, no matter the circumstance. 
Paul puts it this way in Ephesians 3.20. Now to him is able to do immeasurably more than we ask or imagine according to his power and work in us. In Philippians 4.19, And my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. No matter the trial, in short, no matter the trial, no matter the circumstance, we can depend on God. Our God who is the same yesterday, today, and will be forevermore. The truth for us as Christians is simple. God alone can quench our thirst. God alone can provide all our needs. God alone can take us through any trial that comes along our path. Man can't. Money can't. Science, reputation or station, no. You name it. Nothing but God can take us through. Only God can sate our thirst no matter what. The story in the woman of the well, John 14, 13, Jesus says, Everyone who drinks of this water will be thirsty again. But whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. In short, God will guide us if we just follow Him. But we need to remember that generally he's not going to do it our way and he's not going to force us to do it his way either. We need to remember this and it's important. Isaiah 55, God will do it his way. And more often than not, not the way we thought it was going to happen, but generally much better and much more than we expected it to be. So why do we quarrel? Why do we put the Lord to the test? I think the hymn writer probably got it right when he said, Trust and obey, for there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. A nice short message today. In conclusion, when it comes to testing God in the Bible, Jesus simply says, No. You shall not put the Lord your God to the test. Except on this one occasion in Malachi 3.10, where he says, Bring the whole tithe to the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. So the choice is ours. We can remain unsatisfied, we can continue to be on the moan again, or we can trust and obey. We can come to God alone as the quencher of our thirst, our provider, our guide, our sustainer of our faith. We have the choice. Amen. Let us pray. Lord and Heavenly Father, I don't know, I think sometimes we're just so fallible and we struggle and we try and work it out and we just, I don't know, we still think with our humanness instead of within the power of the Holy Spirit that is inside of us. And in that we doubt, we stumble, we fall, we groan, we on the moan again, all these sort of things. But Lord, this morning I just want to thank you that you love us. That you'll never leave us nor forsake us. That your provision is sufficient. That your provision is abundant and so much more. That your love, your grace, your mercy and your compassion exceed and go above all. So Lord, help us to let that truth resonate within us today. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for joining me this morning. I pray that you are truly blessed, that the message spoke to you, that God spoke to you, and that you have a truly blessed, blessed day. And I say to us all today, now may the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love God's will.
Amen.